Hey everyone, Sim Farmer, and welcome to Silver Run Forest for the first episode in our new Let's Play time lapse kind of series. So, we're starting off in new farmer mode with the starting equipment, and we're going to take it from there. So, we've got the three areas of land we start with $100,000 in our bank account, and then we've got the Volvo BM tractor, the forwarder, and then the Komatsu tree harvester. Uh, we've also got our little log cabin here where we can rest up for the night. And I've just realised I need to turn off the interactive zone markers which I switched on for the map tour I've just finished doing. Because I really dislike them. Uh, handy things if you don't know where stuff is located. But yeah, I really don't like having them switched on. So yeah, if you want to see exactly what we start with, there'll be more detail in the map tour. So I think as this is a forestry map and a forestry let's play series... A time lapse series. <laughs> I'm not sure how well this is going to go because I've kind of got an idea of how I want it to go. Um, so it's going to be kind of like a hybrid let's play time lapse kind of mix. Uh, with, uh, but we'll see how it goes. So it may develop over the next few episodes or the, the whole series as we go and as I refine how it all kind of works out. So we've got a nice flat area ish, flatish area, I should say, before it drops off down towards the down there so we do own right the way down past that pond that you can just see through the trees so we do own quite a fair bit of land and there are a lot of trees so I think the first task will be to start getting some trees cut down and then uh, we'll decide what we're going to do with them so we'll use our nice used Komatsu 153 hours on the clock for this uh, we'll do them 5 meters, which I think it's set to, yep, which I think 5 meters is about as long as you want for the forwarder. And what we'll do, we'll start working away from the house, uh, clearing as many trees as we can with this. Uh, some of the bigger ones we'll have to clear with the chainsaw and then chop up and then load up that way because they're a little bit too big for this tree harvester so I think what it will be do we'll drag as many trees into the clearing as we can and then make it a little bit easier to see when we're loading them up I do really like the new uh, that you can disable the manual of the automatic cut on the logs which is one thing I really disliked <laughs> Um, one of the reasons why I didn't use the base game equipment too much was just that, that sometimes the logs would just end up going all over the place because you lack of control once you've got the log cut which you still have a little bit you can't quite twist the head when you've got the log in position uh, but at least now with the auto cut disabled you can kind of position them a little bit to line them up a little bit better so what I'm going to do is continue cutting the logs in this area I uh, will probably clear some of these other trees as well, which I should be able to do. Possibly with the lumberjack mod. Although I'm not getting an option to uh, delete this one. Oh, there we go. So we can completely delete these ones. Just to clear them out of the way. Uh, get rid of that stump as well. So yeah, we'll continue clearing off this area of land as much as we can and then we'll take it from there.
Right, so that's a load of logs cut down in this area. So we've started to make a nice clear in here. A few stumps we need to just get rid of, which we can use the lumberjack mod. There's a couple of trees, I think two or three trees that are too uh, big for the tree harvester. So this one, the diameter of the base of the tree, and I think this one as well, is too big for our tree harvester to, to process. So we'll have to cut these ones down and this one as well manually, then uh, cut them up with the chainsaw. So we've got a few stumps to remove as we go around. Some of these trees and bushes, some of these small ones, I don't think I can remove with the chainsaw, but they may get removed with uh, plowing in a new field or with the landscaping tools. Some of the other ones, uh, that one's not too bad. I think it was the dogwood trees that I just deleted. <laughs> I cut one down to have a look and it was a bit tricky to get it to work properly to delimit. So I've just deleted those ones. So the next job is to start getting some of these loaded up so we can get them down to the sawmill. I think for the first load of trees Well, we've got a couple of options. We could just sell them as they are, or we could purchase one of the production buildings and then take some to that and start getting some production. So I'm, I'm not the best at using these things. I can use them, but I don't use them very often to uh, get good enough to use them. Uh, get like to a decent level where they find them easy to use. Sometimes I do find that the uh, this camera angle can be a little bit easier because you're just viewing it from the direction it works and from my pre slight test on this it doesn't really like picking up multiple logs but I will give it a go just to see yeah it's really not liking that at all the best I've been able to do is one log at a time which is a little bit annoying and slow Probably going to be a little bit too far now for us to. Yeah, we're a little bit too far away for that one now. It's just gone beyond our reach. Now, this is why I don't use these things very often. They're just so slow to use. I'd much prefer a tractor with a front loader. I don't quite think we're in the centre of that one. At least centre of the weight. So there's one in. <laughs> Switch back to this camera. I find it a little bit easier to use. So yeah, what we'll do, we'll get this loaded up. And then uh, we'll need to decide what to do. We've got 99,000, so we can afford some of the productions. It's also trying to decide what to um, the best way to go about to progress from the start if we just sell this buy some more equipment so we can process logs a little bit quicker and transport more uh, which is I think would be the better option to do to start with I can just push that one out just slightly over the headboard so yeah, we'll continue loading these up, we'll get a full load, and then I think we'll probably just sell the first few loads. Until we get going. Let's <laughs> just say, I find it much easier when you're in, you're facing the right direction for this. And actually I'll bet this one's probably one we could pick up by hand. Yeah. So we'll throw that one on by hand. It to sit down and uh, yeah we'll continue loading up the rest of these logs as many as we can fit on 
and um, we'll see how much we can make from that. Okay, I think we'll um, call it quits for this load. So I think we're going to start struggling to keep them on top if we try and put any more on. So if we try and sort of fold up the crane. It's not way up in the air. And we'll take this down to the south sawmill, which is not too far from here. So we are currently here. So if we go down this dirt track and then along the road, just to the sawmill here and we can sell this load of logs I think that is the nearest log sell point I don't know if it's the best price currently uh, let's have a look container warehouse is currently the best price but we don't have a container to put the logs in to take them there um, Elm Creek is the next best place which would mean then loading them onto the train and we don't really have Anyway, to try and load them up onto the train at the moment, I uh, don't really try to fancy loading a train with this. So we'll head down to the South Sawmill and uh, get this load sold, see how much we make. I don't mind using this, I've found it's not too bad, it does seem much improved over last time I tried anything like this, but I'd much prefer to get a front loader on a tractor with the log grab. I find it's a lot, lot faster than using this. So I may sell this because I don't know how much I'm going to actually get any use out of it. So what I may do is finish using this to get the rest of the logs loaded up first and then possibly sell this and uh, replace it with something different. Okay, so we're down at the South Sawmill. So if we just unload it or unload, just drive into this trigger box here. We can then get this load sold. And I think the trigger is somewhere around here. It's one of those things I'll probably need to put the interactive zone markers back on. I can't remember exactly where the trigger is. Oh, not far off, just inside the... So 8,465 is not a huge amount for that load. So just remember it's just inside that corner for that. So yeah, you can imagine how long it's going to take to make any decent money with one small load like that each time. It is a very slow vehicle. I say it's not really designed for long distance transport of logs. It's more just for bringing them out the forest areas. I'm just going to quickly check, see how much um, this is actually worth. So we'll go into our garage because I know it's quite used. So 34,000 if we was to sell this. Uh, currently there is a Massey Ferguson 711 skid steer, but I don't know if you get much height on that. Because we could get the front loader attachment and then get the... No, the downside is it's not part of the actual uh, platinum edition. But the other options with the Platinum DLC is similar to what we've got now, but mounted onto a tractor. So where's forestry? I've completely lost where I think is. I mean, this is 202,000, which is a little bit expensive at the moment. But again, you've got a similar thing with a crane arm just to load up the logs. 
and then there's also this one which is a similar kind of thing see ideally i'd love to get one of these to try out uh, with the grapple on but yeah that's a little bit too much at the moment so ideally that's what i think we'll work towards getting one of these um, but for now, I may sell this because I say it's not ideally suited for transporting logs down to the sawmill. If we had a production sawmill right next to the forest, it wouldn't be so bad just to quickly load up and then take them that short distance. But driving backwards and forwards is going to take a long time. And the fact that we, can, we can't even hook another trailer onto the back either, which... Is another downside to this. Well, I'll go and get the the rest of the logs, and we'll get those sold using this, and then uh, I think I may get rid of it. Oh, I'll decide while we uh, load up the rest of them. So I think we sold around about three loads of logs and this thing is just way too slow. So I, as much as I'm enjoying using it and it is obviously a new piece of equipment, I just can't continue to use it. It's taking me forever to just drive backwards and forwards and then load up. So I'm going to reluctantly sell it. I just, yeah, it's, it, it's a nice bit of kit, but maybe I'll use it again in the future. But for now, I'm going to get rid of it. So we'll repair it first and then repaint it. So 40,282 we'll get for that. And I'm going to buy, in the used equipment sales, I'm going to pick up this, the Massey Ferguson 7-Eleven from Black Sheep Modding, which is in the used equipment sales. Simply because we've got the contracts we can do for the rock breaking and also we can remove the rocks on our own land while it's used and a reduced price as well. I think we'll get this. I will add the extra weight on if we can. We'll go forestry as we are doing the forestry map. I thought you could add some extra weight to this unless maybe it's a separate add-on you can buy. So we'll buy that. I'm just trying to think. Skid steer loader, front loader. We'll keep it skid steer loader. So that's 13,600 for that. And I'm also going to get the John Deere 7810, which is also available in the used equipment sales. But I'm going to get it with the front loader attachment. So we'll go with the quickie on that. I'm not going to change anything else. Possibly the number plate. If we can fit. Uh, Oh, we can. So we'll go with that. Uh, wheel set up. I can't remember which ones were on it. <laughs> we'll keep. We'll keep with the continentals. So that's fifty-eight thousand four hundred and sixty-one. So we'll go now and get a front loader. 
that will fit. Let's just go tractors medium. John Deere 7810, which is the one we've got. No, it doesn't show. I thought you'd give you the combination to show which uh, front loader would fit on that, but it doesn't. So we'll use one of the quickie ones. I always usually go for 7M. I know it's a little bit, probably a little bit too big for the tractor but it gives you a little bit more extra reach when you're loading the logs. So we'll get that as well, which is 10,000, and then I'm gonna get the front loader tools, and I'll get the log grab, which is another 3,000. Uh, we don't need a bucket at the moment. And the other thing I wanna get while we're here is, because we've got no way of actually transporting logs, so I'm just gonna get one of these HW80s, Oh, actually, could try one of these without the crane, 18,000. You can link these up together as well. It's a little bit more expensive, but it is part of the Platinum Edition. Uh, I don't think we'll be able to fit as much on. All right, let's go with one of these, as it's something new from the Platinum Expansion, rather than using one I've used before. It's a shame that the Volvo that's in the Platinum Expansion doesn't have a front loader option. Because I'd just use that. But we can use that then for the winching tractor. And for the transport. We'll get the front loader on. We'll come back for the Massive Ferguson uh, in a little bit. We might need to get a little small trailer so we can move that around. So yeah, this trailer's not massive, but it does look like we can hook up multiple ones. So once we've got a little bit more money, or we can add a second one to this and get ourselves a little log train going. But it does look fairly long, so we might be able to fit six meter lengths on as opposed to the five we had on the Volvo. So there are some five meter length logs left. Um, I, I give up after that that last load with the Volvo I was just like this is just taking far too long uh, but yeah at least I've given it a go and I must say I'm really impressed with how well it works as long as you make sure you don't overcut the length of the logs uh, so keep them to five meters maximum for the Volvo BM um, and also then don't try and pick up the really big heavy logs that you can't cut so the lower parts of these big trees that we currently can't cut with our tree harvester so yeah, still got quite a few actually i forgot about that pile behind the tree harvester that we still got so what i'm going to do i'll leave those ones there for now uh, we do have a few a few deadwood trees i think uh we've got that one that's deadwood tree uh, yeah there's another one just there but we'll leave those for a little bit uh, this one as well is a deadwood tree as you can see in the bottom right hand corner with the extended info we've got deadwood 17 meters I really don't think they're worth a lot so I'm gonna get rid of this one um, if you've none of you have aware of watched any of my uh, time lapses when I've explained about how to do the forestry uh, what I always do is obviously just run up to a tree and cut it down if you watch any of my time lapses before where I've done forestry, you'll see I'll get all the trees going in the same direction when I cut them down. What I usually do is work out which angle to cut them. So for this one, we want to kind of go opposite where we are. So, so that's 70 degrees we want that to go down to. So if we add 90 onto that, that takes us up to 160. So if we come round to 160 degrees on the minima, get as close as we can. It doesn't need to be precise. So if you look down the bottom left-hand corner, you can just see the on the minima the degrees. So we are now 160. Bring out our chainsaw and then cut at 160 degrees. That tree now should fall nice at 70 degrees to where we was facing. So we've avoided the house. <laughs> 
Um, and then if you've got a lot of trees in the line, if you then do 160 on each tree, the way you're facing, and then cut them to the same direction, that should all fall parallel to each other. So they're not falling all over each other and overlapping. So handy little tip there to... Uh, it's good when you've planted a lot of trees or you're in a large area of forest. Make sure your tree's not going to get caught up on other trees or they're going to end up falling on top of each other. So what is this one? This is a 34.1 meter spruce tree. So just a little bit big on this end to uh, cut down. Um, just trying to think. I don't think we can pick any of these up. Oh, we can. I think that, that one's actually a little bit too short. Just see if we've got a six meter log that we can actually pick up. A uh, five meter. Yeah, actually, I want to cut these ones to six meters. Right, I do have the measure mod installed. So I'll use that. It's not 100% accurate, but it'll get us somewhere near six meters. So if I do. Oh, oh. Was it left alt and oh, I think I have the measure mod. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah. So you got on the help window at the top now we've got zero meters. So if I move across to six. As close as we can get it. And then we'll cut that. And then we'll go twelve. Again as close as we can. So the measure mod unfortunately isn't available on console, but it is on the mod hub for PC. So 12, 18, and then we want 24, and then 30. And that end will get cut off, so we'll load this up onto our new trailer. There we get rid of the help window. So there's only those three trees we can't do with the tree harvester. So hopefully six meters should fit on this trailer. I didn't consider if we needed a weight. I think if we're doing one log at a time we should be okay. Yeah. Uh, six meters. Yeah, we should get away with six. Oh, slightly a little bit long. Oh, this is a nice looking trailer, but I think it is a bit on the small side. <laughs> we definitely need to get a second one of these. Oh, and I think with two of them, we may struggle to fit six meter lengths on. So maybe for these big trees, we'll just do sixes for now. And then when we get back in the tree harvester, we'll stick to fives. And get another another one of these trailers so we can double our loads each tree. As for the deadwood trees, I'm not 100% sure what to do with those. I don't know whether to just delete them. Because I don't think it's worth taking them to a production point if you own one. Or selling them. So it's a... A lot of time spent loading them up, transporting them for a very little gain. So we may just get them cut down and then remove them with the lumberjack mod to get them out of the way. So I don't have a wood chipper to say, I don't know if they're worth wood chipping either. So we've got a fairly decent clearing here now. We'll get these two on. All I'll do is we'll get the the other two big trees that we can't cut down with a tree harvester. We'll get those cut down and loaded up as well. And then we'll take these to sell. Let's see if we can just nudge that one on a bit. Uh, 
there. So it's those two there that are just in front of us. So I'll get these two cut down and loaded up and then we'll get these sold. So we're pretty much fully loaded. May have been able to squeeze a few more on top, but we'll keep it nice and stable. So we'll get this load sold, and I think we'll probably call it there for today because I'm fastly running out of time to get a bit more done. So we've made a good start on cleaning a bit of land, tried out some of the new equipment from the, uh, the tree harvester, the forwarder. So next time what we'll probably do is continue trying to clear some more space and have a go maybe doing some of the other contracts, uh, rock removal and uh, things like that. And then we also need to decide also need to decide on how to progress from where we currently are. So there's obviously a lot more trees we continue clearing to earn some more money. It's whether we invest in one of the productions to start taking some logs to. So we can work towards getting all the productions we need then so we can start producing all of the elements required to build the roller coaster and start building the boats as well. Um, I do plan on doing arable farming on here as well, so we'll start, as we progress further, we'll start looking to expand and get some of the, some fields created, uh, get some, maybe get some animals as well. So we're not just doing, going to be doing forestry for the entire series. So we'll drop those ones off. So 7,915 for that load, eh, not too bad, I definitely think we could do with a second trailer. That's how. The other one would have been better but I thought I'd give this one a try. Though can't exactly fit a huge amount on but this will allow us to do some of the transport missions as well. So we should be able to fit those logs on, I'm not 100% sure exactly how long they are. Maybe we'll have a look at one of those next time. Uh, to start off with if there's one available see how many logs from the contract we can fit on and see how long they are because if they're a little bit too long we might not be able to get two trailers on so yeah this may be a slightly short episode but hopefully you've enjoyed it if you have then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up I really do appreciate that and if you've not yet subscribed to the channel then please do consider subscribing. We've got more farming simulator videos coming up and live streams, let's plays, time lapses as well. So yeah, consider subscribing if you've not yet already. And a big thank you to everyone that's watched. We'll get our little uh, skid steer back up to the farm. Or say farm, forestry area, main area, yard. So yeah, big thank you to everyone that's watched. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you again. Goodbye.